What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to the Stephen Effects Podcast. Can you believe we're on episode three? Stand firm on solid rock, your flint ain't never break. Even when they take the shot, personification of a nation. Gifted but forsaken. He bit the apple, but he saved us. Yeah, don't let him take ya. Even when you feel the way to her persuasion. No matter what, the snake will string or the razor. The sword will handle the hate. No matter what, you keep the on. Ain't nothing to fight. Adam was trying to be the wrong and the right. Leading by love, guided by light. Never to lie, hate in disguise. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome to the Stephen Effects Podcast. I am just an imperfect man who has decided to choose God and surrender to my assignment. I am your host, Tyler Jacob. And if you're new, welcome to the family. If you're returning, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for coming back and for showing this page love and support. If you haven't yet, please make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as that bell. And... Also follow me on social media, Tyler Jacob Official, as well as TylerJacobOfficial.com, where you can get all behind the scenes stuff, cop some merch, and tune into the channel. This channel is about God. This channel is about learning together as a unit as we grow. So please make sure you comment to let me know that we're going the right way together, or if there's any questions that we can literally study as a unit. This channel is not just about me, it's about community, it's about friendship, it's about love, it's about guidance, it's about truth, it's about learning together, it's about correction, so I'm not opposed to anything. So as we shed layers together as a family, let's get into this next episode. Welcome, 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 welcome. Um, today's topic is fatherless child. I definitely wanted to avoid this topic for many, many, many reasons, but God placed it heavy on my heart for the purpose of my healing, but also for the purpose of someone out there who is feeling that empty, soul-searching desire that belongs to Christ. I have to share that growing up, For a long time, I actually spent most of my younger years and a lot of my adult years believing that I was missing something, believing that I had gone through life and missed out on so many opportunities and that a part of me was not like everyone else because I didn't have a father in my life or a male figure in my life to kind of guide and lead me into certain spaces the way that what society calls a normal family would be. I guess if we rewind to the beginning, my dad wasn't always absent as far as me being able to kind of see him in the physical, but there are so many times where I try to rewind and have memories and I really don't have much. I really don't have too many memories with my father. But here is where God worked on me in such a special and awesome way, uh, which happened a few years back, where I was one time seeking therapy for what people would call daddy wounds. I was having like a meditation slash prayer time with God, and I was asking God, like, why? Like, why wouldn't I have a father? Why do I suffer with the things that I suffer with? Why am I living the lifestyle that I'm living? Why am I going this route? Why am I doing these things? And God revealed to me through time, it wasn't even in that moment, it was through time, the many occasions that required me to have the experience that I had. And as I grew older, I started to really understand God's intention with my life and God's protection, but also his assignment. And it really changed my perspective because everything that I thought was one way ended up changing into an entirely different thing. What am I talking about? So the fact that my father wasn't present for most of my life was trauma. Or at least I had registered it as trauma. That part of my life made me feel empty. It made me feel like I was always in need of finding that type of connection somewhere, somehow, with someone, even some things, right? And 
that emptiness and that soul searching led me into a lot of spaces that, to be honest with you, were required, even though in the moment I didn't necessarily understand why. So God revealed to me that in my personal walk with Christ, it was required that I look at him like my father, that I had to shed all of the things that I idolized. I had to shed all of the experiences that I once put titles on to understand that it was a part of the journey. I had taken on so many identities that I didn't even realize I was chaining myself. I kept saying, you know, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, and I needed this, and I needed that. Come to find out, I didn't need any of it, right? Because obviously I wouldn't be standing today had I needed any of those things. And I come to the realization that if there is something that was required of me, then it would be. If there was something that was supposed to be, then it would be. And so that was the biggest aha moment for me when I started to kind of just reflect on my life and reflect on the moments that I continually reminded myself that I was missing something. When in reality, a lot of the experiences that I had been able to have had been because of that missing piece. And let me just break that down for you in a way that I was able to break it down for myself. If I had a father present in certain moments, then I wouldn't have gone down a certain lifestyle. And if I didn't go down that lifestyle, then I wouldn't have met most of the people who I've met, who in today's world, I feel extremely assigned to. And so I start seeing God put the puzzle pieces together in such a strategic way that I surrender. And that surrender gives me that peace that surpasses understanding. And so then I understand through that feeling that the Holy Spirit is present. And that frees me from all of the identities that I had given myself or that I put onto myself that caused me to be completely stagnant. Like I was 100% stuck where I was because in my mind, I was missing my father. And as I grow older and I spend more time with God and I really dive into relationship with him, I start to realize that all of the things that I've ever needed in my life, I've always had in surplus, actually. I start to look at other people's experiences and the people in the world who are missing a lot of things, for example, homeless people, or you know, people out there who just get thrown into adoption, people who just don't have the opportunities that God has given me. And that gives me so much perspective on why God decided to send me down the path that he did. And it gives me kind of purpose and it makes me feel excited to go on to the next chapter of my life. And it makes me feel motivated and encouraged to know that if I believed this much up to this point with so much conviction within me, that I had some sort of truths and I've seen those truths become lies and I've been able to shed those lies. I can only imagine the things that God will reveal to me as I get older and as I grow closer to him. Why am I sharing this? Because a lot of the times we get convinced that who we are is what is happening to us in the moment. And what happens to us in the moment, and from my perspective, is testing. I believe that God is equipping us with what is required of us for every single chapter. He's developing us so that we can have whatever tools it is that we need, whatever mindset it is that we need for our bigger picture, for the big assignment, for the big to-do that he gave us to fulfill here on this earth. And when I start really stepping back and really seeing the bigger picture from what I can see in this moment, knowing that as I grow older, that picture continually becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. In this moment, I really see all of the word as 
getting to know God because there's just so much to get to know that in my 35 years of living up to this point, I thought I knew it all every year up until this point to only know that I know nothing at all. Everything that I've learned up to this point, I actually, like, I realized I knew nothing. And to someone that may make them feel like they lost a part of themselves because who they used to be is no longer who they are. But for me, it gives me excitement because it's like, wow, I don't have to even hold myself to who I used to be, especially for the people who are not really happy with their past, right? It allows me to free myself from those things. And I, and I start to understand how God says that when we lean on him and when we repent from the things that don't serve us and from the things that are sin in our life, that he casts those things so far into the ocean that he doesn't even remember them. But if he doesn't remember them, then why do we? Right? A lot of the times I walk through life and one of the funniest things that always happen to me is that people always remind me of things that I used to do. And it's crazy how they say that when you are born again in Christ, that you're made new, right? That things from the past are no longer. And I really feel that a lot of the times people remind me of things and I don't know if I've gotten gotten amnesia or whatever the case is, I forgot a lot of things. People remind me, remember you used to like this? Remember you used to do that? Remember this? And a lot of the times I'm just like, oh, okay, cool. But in my mind, I'm thinking, no, I don't remember that. And I realize it's not because I lost my mind, even though I might have lost it a little bit. <laughs> but bigger picture, I realize that when you come to Christ, it's required that we purge things that don't serve us. It's required that we let go of the old, why? Because it allows us to make space for new things. It allows us the opportunity to rewrite some of the narratives that we've created in our soul and in our mind that literally were never supposed to be there in the first place. You have the things that God ordained us to walk through and then the things that we don't let go of. Like I, for a long time, let's go back to the fatherless child. I kept attaching a lot of my experiences to me not having a dad and you know, oh, I can't be in a relationship because I don't have a father. I don't know what it is to be a man. I don't know what it is to do this. I don't know what it is to do that. Even diving into a homosexual lifestyle because always seeking that father figure, even in relationships. And I understood that more when every time I would get in a relationship, I just could not connect. I just felt like, okay, I, I got to this point. We're here, we're connected, but I can't actually connect with you, you know? Or I would get engaged and I would get to the point of getting to the walking up to the altar and being like, I don't want to do this. And that happened continually over and over and over and over and over again. Or even realizing that so many times I would go up to an experience and be so confident in wanting to achieve whatever it is I wanted to achieve and then realize I really don't want to do this, you know? And that came from the idea of trying to find my father in everything and everyone, when in reality, he was here the whole time. Like he never ever left my side, which was God. God walked me through every chapter of the book and I didn't even acknowledge nor see him. And I remember the day that I came to that realization, I just sat there and I cried because I realized, wow, for so long, I was blinded in this area but not condemning myself, but being joyful that I was able to let that part go. Also being joyful that I was able to understand and that I didn't have to walk forward not knowing why. Because a lot of the things we won't actually get explanations for, like for example, if you're in an abusive relationship and you're trying to figure out from that other person's perspective why they are the way that they are and they just can't explain it to you, some of the things we just, we don't even need to know. You just need to walk away, forgive the person, and continue on about your life. But things that God gives you the understanding and the why to make you feel special, right? I know it makes me feel special because it makes me think to myself, wow, God, I'm such a drop in such a big ocean, and you love me that much that you give me understanding of something where you don't even have to explain. You don't even have to give me any sort of understanding. 
but to allow me to walk forward in this game of life with knowledge that ultimately you also let me know in the moment is just for this chapter and not being so attached to what is coming or what was but loving what is in the moment you know and loving the now and loving everything that's happening in the moment which so many times because of what happens in life or because of even being in community with other people those moments get stolen because we start stressing about bills or we start stressing about things in life whatever the case is it doesn't necessarily have to be bills it could be just life in general or we come into community with someone and they're telling us about their stresses and we're having to think about the things that are going on in their lives and so we lose out on all of the things that God is blessing us with in this moment and I'm sharing all of this to even just bring it full circle with being a fatherless child that I lost so much of my now believing that I was missing something that I had with me every part of every now and so I'm sharing this with you guys to free you from any sort of moments that you guys are experiencing right now that is taking you out of the now any sort of moments that are causing you to feel like you have to go too far in the future or you have to dig too far in the past so that you can understand something in this moment if it's not understood then it doesn't need to be understood if it's too far in the future then allow god to actually get like actually get there first before trying to really organize besides the things you can do in the now like if you're going to plan and you're going to schedule and you're going to create like do those things with a sound and peaceful mind but if it causes you to be out of that i highly encourage the surrender of those things to god and when i tell you these are the hardest things in the world because i suffer from this daily where i know that it's required for us to surrender whatever it is we're going through in the moment to God so that we can continue to experience the now and see the now and I'm getting better at it you know like I'm not gonna condemn myself but I will say that I definitely have a lot of work to do in that area I definitely have a lot of work to move towards when it comes to letting go of certain thoughts or allowing God to be the center focus of everything that I do and even when it comes to all of the different gifts that God has blessed me with like for example music i i started going back into some of the things that i used to do and i'm like you know i've been doing this for such a long time and i realize i don't release music i don't do the things that really make me happy because of insecurities because of thinking that i need to do it a certain way or i have to have certain people attached to it or it has to have a certain budget and it needs to be a certain this 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 this, this and that that I start to realize that time doesn't wait for us but the now gets stolen by the th- the different things that distract us from it and I start appreciating like for example when I released a song recently where I really just let it go and it and it was like you know no matter what the numbers are no matter who is listening or who's not listening it just feels good to have something out that I can look back on and say you know what I did it I went through it I, that fear that I once had was released and then I can come back to the now and I can say okay what's next and how do I get to that next part and God thank you so much for the things that I'm allowed to do in this moment and not even thinking about the things that don't serve me and when people come into our spaces where we're required to sacrifice our peace at times or we're required to sacrifice you know our understanding so that we can just listen even those moments we appreciate the opportunity to be present to be a servant of God's assignment you know i'm i now in my skin today have the understanding that if it's happening because i am a believer and because i've given my life to Christ that because the steps of a good man are ordered that if i'm there i'm supposed to be there if there's something that's happening then that step was ordained right and that comes with the what i perceive as problems that comes with what i perceive as great experiences that comes with even what i perceive as things that i don't understand it was all required and so now my mindset as of yesterday is are you going to pass the test or are you going to surrender and fall and give up and so me being a competitive person 
with myself and I'm, I actually only compete with myself, I start to remind myself of how far I've gotten in this journey before and how I've fallen. I'm grateful that God gave me the encouragement to say, I don't want to do that again. And I don't want to go down the same path again or do the same things again. But I also don't let my past failures dictate my future failures as well. Like I'm okay with taking risks sometimes that will require me to fall in order for me to know, okay, it didn't work this time with A and it didn't work this time with B. You know, let me work at, work at it this time with C. Because a lot of the time we fall at A and then we don't even get to B because we are so, I guess, in trauma of what happened with A that we don't even give any other chances to anything else. I don't want to be that person. I want to be the person who continues moving forward and has faith in Christ that everything that I do is because of him. And also that no matter what I'm experiencing in life, that I can have a, a great heart at approaching everything at all, the t at all the time. And that if God is for you, who can be against you, right? That's the biggest part of the freeing chapter of my life that has been blessing me as of recent. I've now registered that it doesn't matter what is going on in our life if we surrender it to God. If we believe that what God is doing in our lives is not to forsake us, but to prosper us, then that actual feeling and not just saying it, but actually believing that, then no matter what's going on in our life, we're okay with. But I'm asking for you guys to put in prayer that when I'm struggling, whether it be in any way, shape or form, that I'm able to remember that God is not trying to forsake me, but he's, to pros he's here to prosper me. And I'm also desiring for you guys to pray for me to remember that in everything that I feel, surrender it to God first. That in everything that I feel, go to the word about it first. To not feel the need to vent about everything and to not feel the need to have my point across for everybody or to, if I feel misunderstood or if I feel like someone is not actually correct, that if I say my opinion, if I give them my pearls, that I'm okay with walking away in certain areas. I'm asking that you guys pray that God works on my pride because I'm realizing as I reflect on my life and as I reflect in certain areas, all the way even down to my father being gone, me not being able to let that go has been because of my pride. And now that I know that, I'm so excited to be able to walk in my skin today knowing that every every chapter is to humble me even more and that when I get to a certain point where I'm down to nothing and I'm not talking about a physical down to nothing I'm talking about when I'm down to the bare gratitude for everything no matter what it is that I can actually be be proud of the journey and not look back and feel regret or not look back and feel like I didn't do what I was supposed to do or not look back and feel like I missed out on something. You know, I want to be able to look back and say, I'm proud, Stephen. You did a great job. You went through this process and you didn't get angry this time. You know, I went through this process and you weren't the person who people call you or that you didn't do the thing that people will consider predictable. The only part of predictable that I want to be is for somebody to say he's a great person, that he's kind, he's loving, he's generous, that he's giving, and that he honors Christ in everything that he does, that he's the same person when no one is watching, and he's also the same person when everyone is watching. And I'm not there yet. And that's just me being honest, you know? I'm not there yet, but I desire to be. And I'm excited because because that's my desire and my understanding that God gives you your desires. I'm excited to, to get it. You know, I'm excited to get there eventually. All right, guys, I feel like I've said so much and I actually have to go. But I want to leave you guys with this. Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to love you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to know you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to even be able to see 
all of the things that there are to be grateful for, God, because there's so many times where I've been blinded. There's so many times where I went through life not even being able to to think clearly, to know that even being able to think is a gift. Father, thank you so much for the people all across the world, Lord Jesus, who are alive in this moment, who have breath in their lungs. Father, I pray that anyone who's going through anything right now, Lord Jesus, that you allow them to know that you are the healer. Thank you, Jehovah Jireh, for providing all of our needs. Thank you, Jehovah Nisi, for the victory over every battle, that whether it's seen or unseen, God. Thank you, Jehovah Shalom, for the peace that surpasses understanding, even when we are in the midst of a storm, Father. Father, thank you for Jehovah Rapha for our healing, whether it be physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. God, I pray that anyone who is in need, whether it be food, whether it be shelter, God, that it's provided for them in surplus. Father, I pray that every single exchange between your believers and humans on this earth, Lord Jesus, that are elevating conversations, that are developing situations, that are moments that are going to continue to cause your people and your assignment to be fulfilled, but also your people to grow. Father, God, thank you so much for the ability to pray, to come into your presence, because you are holy. You are awesome. You are Alpha. You are Omega. You are the one true living God. We honor you. We love you. God, thank you so much for having our back. Thank you so much for making us and for creating us. And God, we make you our shelter. And we say, if we make you our shelter, that no plague will come near our home, that 10,000 could be dying at our side, God, that 10, that thousands could be dying around us and that those evils will not touch us, God. I pray that you continue to protect us, continue to put up the shields around the enemy's traps, Father God. I pray that any trap that the enemy has set be a trap that they set for themselves, Father. God, thank you so much for the opportunity to know you, love you, and experience you. We honor you, we love you, covered in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Stand firm on solid rock, your flint ain't never break Even when they take the shot, personification of a nation Gifted but forsaken He bit the apple but he saved us, yeah, don't let him take ya Even when you feel the way to her persuasion No matter what, the snake will strangle the razor The sword will handle the hate. No matter what, you keep the arm Ain't nothing to fight Had him a sign to be the wrong and the right Leading by love, guided by light Never to lie, hate in disguise 